You're watching Women's Lacrosse on ACC Network Extra. We're in Durham, North Carolina today, where seventh ranked Duke is off to his best start in more than 15 years. But today will be the biggest test of the season so far. Second ranked Boston College, the defending champs, come to town. Welcome in. Glad to have you with us today for this top 10 contest. I'm Ben George alongside former lacrosse coach Debbie Taylor. I know a lot of people tuned in today to see Charlotte North make her return to Koskinen. But these two programs are focused on a much bigger picture right now. Oh, there's a lot on the line today as the nation's top two scoring offenses go head to head, fighting for the top two seeds in the upcoming ACC tournament. It's a tightly contested race in the ACC this season with four teams ranked in the nation's top 10. Duke and BC both coming into today's contest with only one loss tied for second place. Yeah, this is what the, the bracket would look like right now if the season ended today. And whoever put the schedule together did a great job because it's essentially a round robin to finish out the year. These top four seeds. Duke will finish their season at number one UNC. Boston College will head to number four Syracuse. So a lot of good action still to be played. No doubt. And today we'll be focused on a couple of duos for Duke. This offensive duo has been so good this year. Now, both Kat Barry and Katie DeSimone, they are the top point producing duo in the country, combining for 155 points on the season. They're a lot of fun to watch. And on the other side, Boston College, you know Charlotte North, but her counterpart right there, they've had an incredible year as well. well North and Medjid combined for over 45% of their team scoring. They are the number one duo in the nation for goals scored, combining for 113 on the season. So if you like watching the ball go in the net, you're going to watch the right game today. Yeah, we anticipate a really good one. I know a lot of people paying attention to Charlotte North. They have her entire career. She's been the best player in the sport over the last year plus, and she started her career here at Duke before transferring to Boston College. You see what she's done all year. She's just a dy dynamic player. She's just redefining the way the game is played. She's so athletic. She's so strong, physical. She's, her stick is just amazing. Remember, women's lacrosse, the stick doesn't have a pocket, but she plays, plays the game like it does. And she's the number one scorer, goal scored in the ACC. She broke that record this year. She is powerful. She's fun to watch. This is going to be a great game, Ben. And we are set to go here from Koskinen Stadium. A beautiful day in Durham. And you see Maddie Jenner, Duke's all-time draw control leader going against Charlotte North in what will be a key part of this game, who wins the draws, and Duke comes out early winning the first one. Coaches will tell you when you ask them keys to the game, the first thing out of their mouth will be the draw, and we have two of the best in the draw circle today with Maddie Jenner and Charlotte North, and Duke starts the game with possession. We'll keep an eye on this Duke attack who you know, one of the things you do, I guess, to, to limit a team's offense is to possess the ball well. And I know that's something Duke is looking to do. Win the draw, possess the ball offensively, and look to score early here yeah. for this Duke attack. And taking time with their possessions, really being patient on offense. Coach Kimmel telling us that offensive efficiency was going to be key to today's success. Duke averages 18 goals per game. Tops in the country. Duke has a really balanced attack. Nine different double-digit goal scorers on the season as we see Jenner at the top. Nice interior pass, and the Blue Devils get out of the gate with the early goal. Great teamwork. Eva Greco found some space right there in front of the cage. A beautiful pass from Maddie Jenner, and that's the start Duke was looking for. Just a nice interior look. Jenner with the beautiful feed as we see Duke just patiently work the ball around the perimeter. Greco gets a little daylight, loses their defender. Beautiful shot placement. Blue Devils on the board. Duke off to a quick start. One goal on his first possession, Eva Greco. 11th goal this season. Again, one of the many players that can score for this team, and that's what's going to be great about this matchup in general. You look at both these rosters, they got a, a plethora of players that can score. So much balance and so much experience on both teams. Both of these teams returning the majority of their rosters from last season. Boston College winning this national championship this season. Everybody back but one starter. A lot of talent and a lot of experience, especially due to the COVID year with players getting that extra year. Yeah, and I think this one will be a, a one that kind of will teach Duke a lot about itself. And you'd think, well, this is the last home game. You know what you got. But Duke's, their non-conference schedule didn't shake out as, as difficult as they thought. A lot of the non-conference opponents, normally that would be pretty tough, were having maybe a bit of a down year. So I think these last two games will really tell 
Coach Kimmel a lot about her squad. I think teams are going to get to see what they're made of in Boston College with that draw. And the draw has to go over your shoulder. That one didn't. And whoever this year commits the infraction goes to the other team. But there's a, a turnover and a pretty uncharacteristic turnover early for the Eagles. And Duke's coming the other way. Okay, that one went over the stick of Charlotte North. And Duke is able to get the turnover here early. Both these teams love transition, and it will be interesting to see who can control the tempo in this game. Boston College so fast getting the ball down the field. What kind of pressure they can impose in their ride to now to slow Duke down. Great job by Duke getting through the pressure. And Maddie Johnson there who got the start today. She started last game as well. Duke without Kay Conway, one of their experienced defenders who just had a surgery, hoping to get back for the NCAA tournament. but. Maddie Johnson is one of those players that has stepped up in her absence and played very well. So Duke sets up the attack here, up 1-0 early on. The goal by Eva Greco. You see Barry working on the far side. Beautiful pass to Keller, who's got a lot of speed, spits the defense and buries it. A great patience by the Blue Devil attack. They're just sharing the ball and they're waiting for the opportunity. And like you said, Ben, you almost shrink the game taking time of possession, but they look for the right opportunity. Another beautiful cut. Watch the great feed. Drive to the hole, break through the split the defenders, and bury it in the back of the net. Beautiful. The sophomore from Rye, New York, has really come on this year in the midfield for Duke. And the one thing you'll notice right away watching her play is her speed, and you saw it there as she got through the defense and finished it off to give Duke a 2-0 lead. We really weren't sure how this one would start off. I mean, the draw, each team with one draw right now. BC with that turnover. Here we go for draw number three with North and Jenner. Jenner has an opportunity this season to become the NCAA's all-time leader in draw control. She's already Duke's all-time leader, passing her sister Olivia, who held the record for a long time. Yeah, Jenner's had an incredible career, 189 draw controls. Charlotte North is just three draw controls away from 100, so she's also very good. And the other thing, too, to watch for Maddie Jenner, she's also chasing the single-season record as well for draws. So. A lot of records between these two teams. When you when you start going through the books for these two programs, you'll see a lot of the players in the field right now making up that list. Manny Jenner, she's she's a legit 6'2", and it gives her a nice ability to be able to draw to herself and then attack right out of that. Well, Boston College wins that, so they'll set up their offense, turned it over the first time down. This Boston College team, second in the country in scoring offense. They can beat you in a number of ways as well. And a good defense early on is Bell Smith working against Katie Keller. Beautiful pass, though, and the finish. Medjid. Well, we're getting an early look at the scoring capability of both of these teams. And this is why they are the top two scoring offenses in the country, how well they each move the ball. You just, you just need a little bit of daylight, a little bit of clearance with their stick, and what a beautiful pass. Nice shot placement. Jen Medjid, the senior from Garden City, New York, finding the back of the net, getting her team on the board. Wasn't well, bad defense by Duke, just great execution, and Medjid, one of the best in the country, scoring, finishes it off, and this, two, this this game features the only two teams in women's lacrosse with a pair of 50 goal scores. So we expect to see a lot of that, but we know the goals are gonna come primarily from North and Medjid, and that's how Boston College starts today. So we've seen three shots so far and three goals. We're on quite the pace. It's kind of what we expected coming into this when they have not disappointed. Jenner fighting for it. Another, another whistle on Duke that time. Jenner typically, she gets 65% of the draw controls. BC was the only team, one of the only teams last year to outdraw Duke in a game. Yeah, that was the thing. You can't necessarily take away what Jenner does, but it's all about players around the circle executing the game plan. And there's Charlotte North, gets around a defense, tries to get the shot off, but Sophia LaRose is right there. So they deny Charlotte North her first opportunity. That's got to feel good if you're Sophia LaRose getting an early save against 
arguably the best player in the history of women's lacrosse. And North doesn't miss that one very often, but. So Duke on offense now, 2-1. Katie Cosgrove, number 11, getting her stick on that, limiting North's ability to make a good shot on goal. And that's what you want. You need your, your help defenders to create difficult angles, make difficult shots for the other team. Great job by Katie Cosgrove breaking that play up. Steve Simone for in white. She's been a very good player for this, this team in her two years on campus. She has nine goals in the past two games. She comes in playing really well. Nice move by Carner. She'll beat the defense. She goes low to get it by Rachel Hall, but it is called off. Boston College quickly going the other way. Not sure if she got in the crease that time. It's the missed opportunity there. It was a nice shot, and it looks like she went in the crease. So we're going the other way quickly, and here comes BC, and one of the best transition teams in the country. Duke's going to have to get back on defense, slow the ball down. Duke, unlike BC, a little bit of a multiple defensive system. A couple different zones. They'll play some man, and they like to mix it up. And, and one of the ways to stop a high-power offense like BC is to really keep them off kilter. And Duke today going to try to mix it up a little bit. They've got an older, experienced defensive unit who can change defenses. They're smart. See how that turns out for them. Yeah, Duke can come at you in a variety of ways defensively, which Boston College was prepared for. They said they need to come in, see what Duke does, and adjust. Nice move, pass up top is almost intercepted by Biscardi, but instead it is finished by Boston College. Cassidy Weeks takes advantage and evens it up. And that was so close for Biscardi. Her stick was right there and she dismissed that interception. Biscardi's been so good defensively here. We're going back to the other end here. You see she Feet go into the crease, so that goal is called off, which turns it around the other way. And right there, Biscardi just barely misses that interception, picked up by BC. Cassidy Weeks, the senior from Long Island, finishes it up. In a game like this, you gotta, you gotta be on your game, right? So those two missed opportunities, big early on in this one. And those little opportunities and all the hustle plays, second shot opportunities are obviously gonna make a big difference in this one. I know Boston College got to see Cassidy Weeks get her 13th goal. She got off to a great start this year, 11 goals in her first eight games, but only one goal since that time coming into today. But she gets on the board here early and evens it up 2-2. Just about six minutes into this one. Cassidy Weeks in the midfield, one of the probably unheralded players on this Boston College team, just does so much work connecting offense to defense and defense to offense and just such a complete player see North win that and drop it off to her teammate. So she gets the edge on that draw and BC now looking for its first lead today. Both teams have been incredibly efficient with their offensive possessions. Duke defense right now into a zone look. Another open opportunity in front of the net. Sophia LaRose does it though. Gets the save, a big stop. Great job by the senior, Sophia LaRose. She's just quick in goal. She's athletic, she's mature. She's been doing this for a long time. That's what her team's gonna need, some exceptional saves from her today. The Duke's defense has stood strong. Contact there as Natalie Kahn gets pushed out of play. And Anna Callahan will set it up for Duke. Some of those second middies in for Duke now. Chance for the Blue Devils to slow it down a little bit, use some of this clock, work the ball, and look for a great shot opportunity. Here's Barry. Nice move to that. She fakes slow and goes high. 
And Rachel Hall not very happy about the defense in front of her that time. And like many times, defense takes you to offense, right? Without a doubt, Blue Devils exploiting Boston College's 1v1 defense. Blue Devils right now with their early one goal lead in this top two scoring offenses in the, in the nation go head to head. Duke on top, 3-2 midway through the first period here. And a lot of times you're gonna see defense turn into offense, and that's what we just saw here on the Duke's last goal. Sophia LaRose, the senior. Here comes the shot, pass inside, and this is just a point blank save by Sophia LaRose on what could have been another goal for BC that turns it around the other way. Duke offense going to work. Crafty 1v1 move, and BC's goalie, Rachel Hall, visibly upset because it's the goal of the defense to create difficult shots and reduce the shooting angles. And right now, Duke's been effective beating their player one-on-one -on -one and getting easy looks on cage. Yeah, Kat Berry with her 51st goal of the season. She now is even with Katie DeSimone for the team lead for Duke. And a good sign, too, because Berry's only has one goal in her last three games coming into this one. Uh, although she has contributed plenty on the assist side, but good to see her get the goal scoring early on. And we're back to the draw where Boston College does have the early advantage. We talked about the importance of this. Boston College, probably one of the reasons why they were able to win the tight win last year up at Chestnut Hill was due to the, the draw and being able to outdraw Duke, who is the best in the country at doing so. And today it's a 4-1 advantage for Boston College, but this one will go to the Blue Devils. And you see the work that the players that are on the circle have to do, and that ball goes on the ground, creates a 50-50 opportunity. Duke with the hustle coming up with another opportunity to score. Yeah, Barry going quick. As you mentioned, both these teams will try to attack you fast. Duke now with the one-goal lead. Haven't trailed yet so far early in this one. Two teams tied for second in the ACC right now with just one conference loss. Boston College lost by just a goal to North Carolina. Duke fell by just two goals to Syracuse. So just to combine three goals away from both these teams having a perfect record on the year. Such a tightly contested race in the AC. It's got to be one of the most tightly contested in recent years. The caliber of play just gets better and better in the ACC. You know, I think a lot of that has to do with COVID and all these players that have stayed and playing their fifth year and really increased the level of talent and competitiveness. Yeah, no doubt. And either one of these teams could end up winning the regular season, depending on how it shakes out. North Carolina and Syracuse both undefeated coming into last week, going head to head at the Carrier Dome, and UNC able to come out with that that win. It was just, it's just such a good game, and it's just the margin of differential between the top teams is so small this season makes every game exciting down the stretch. I'm in behind Cage, finds DeBellis. She gets knocked down, draws the whistle. Only eight seconds left on the shot clock. Duke will have to go quick here. DeBellis will get us started. Goes up top, Callahan. The shot, it looked like it might have been a pass, and maybe that's what Hall thought, but it ends up in the back of the net for a goal. From way outside, we're sitting up here. I thought it was a pass. I was like, who's she going to pass to it? She just lets it fly. It wasn't even that hard of a shot, but it was an accurate one, and I think it surprised everyone. And Duke with a two-goal lead. The fans are loving it here in Cameron. And Cameron, <laughs> Koskinen, T-shirts coming off the roof. Yeah, you see the replay. It looked like it might have been a pass attempt to De Simone, who just dropped her stick there, and maybe that threw off the goalie's vision. Either way, it's a goal for Callahan and a two-goal lead for Duke. Sometimes luck's a little better than skill, so this one working out for the Devils. You'll take any break you can get in a matchup like this, and time Duke gets one so 4-2 lead on the 18th goal for Anna Callahan for Anna Callahan and we go right back to the draw just a crazy sequence there you you know you had to get a shot off but 
Hard to tell exactly how that one played out, but Duke will take it and now wins the draw to go back on attack. Great job by Olivia Carner to come out up with that one and then she throws it away. It's an unforced turnover in BC on the attack. Yeah, Duke's played a pretty clean game so far. Both teams have for the most part early in this one, but a turnover there. And Duke will put pressure on you on the ride as they do right now. It's under five minutes to go here in the first. Sydney Scales, maybe the best athlete on the team. Quick pass, the transition game almost results in a goal, but turned away by LaRose again. LaRose right now is the MVP of this one. This is what the Blue Devils needed. Some good stops, some great saves. And here they come in transition. Barry finds Keller. She's got an opening and scores. The Blue Devils giving Boston College a taste of their own medicine. Beautiful transition off of that save by LaRose. Stick to stick to stick as we watch the replay here. Another point blank shot. LaRose right there with her stick saves it. Starts the transition. Kicks it out and watch it just the passing sequence. Duke so quick in transition. Stick to stick. And here it comes. We're going to have another pass right in front of Cage to wide open and beautiful shot on the opposite post. Katie Keller, the sophomore from Ryan, New York, with her 20th goal of the season. That's two goals today as well. And you don't see Medjid miss many opportunities from right there on the doorstep. But again, we see it. These teams love to work in transition. We almost had a goal from Boston College in transition, and Duke ends up flipping the script. So a back and forth start to this one as Maddie Jenner scoops up the draw. Blue Devils right now doing a great job with the extra effort coming up with the ground balls on the circle. We got a whistle right there. Carter draws the whistle. This Duke just keeping his foot down, being very aggressive right now. The three goal lead. We talked about tempo control, and right now the Blue Devils, when they have the transition, they go. They don't want to get into a track meet with a very fast Boston College. When they don't, they settle in. They use the clock. They execute. They are controlling the tempo of this game right now. Eight meter for Olivia Carner. She gets closed out quickly. Good defense that time by Boston College. And a good decision. Good decision. Every possession is so important in this one, so give your team an opportunity to work for a good shot. E. Simone, she'll work, draws a double team, gets it up top to Landry, has been hot for Duke. Now Carner has some space, she draws the whistle. All generated by a quick pass out of the double team and quick reversal of the field, creating that open shot and that shooting space call. It's another eight meter opportunity for Olivia Carner. The junior out of Northport, New York. Carner's got such great size. Coach Kim at one point calling her a beast. She's just so tough. She makes things happen. She's so consistent for this Duke team. Doesn't get a lot of the notoriety that Barry and DeSimone do, but she's just been such a steady presence in the midfield. And both these teams, I mean, we talk about the attack a lot, Debbie, but the midfield of these teams is what where it all starts. And they're really going to be the key to who wins this game today outside of the goalkeepers. Um, as we see Sophia LaRose coming up with some key saves. Yeah, but the midfield sometimes is so underrated and they're so important and they run 10, 12 miles a game. It's, it's for the ones that play both ways. It's really an amazing and a tough role to play. Turnover that time by Duke. So a couple of chances from the eight meter. But Duke comes up without a goal and now We'll go back on defense with a three-goal lead. Three minutes left to play in the first period here from Koskinen Stadium. Blue Devils have played very well on both ends so far. Sophia LaRose with three saves. Here's Charlotte North, the brace. A little wrap around her knee, her right knee. She'll get it right back. You're not going to stop her from scoring, but you got to find a way to limit her. And the Blue Devil defense right now has done a nice job eliminating her touches and easy looks. 
Viscardi lost her goggles and had to get them on really quickly and get back in position, and she does. 35 seconds, Duke. Playing tight defense so far. Martello over to North. Middle of defense, great passing. And it's LaRose again. It'll be a reset on the shot clock. Fresh 60 seconds for Boston College. And we said the Duke defense returned everybody but Callie Humphrey from last year's pretty stellar defensive unit. And, and now with the ability to change in and out of zone and man defenses with their maturity and their high IQ, really giving opposing offenses difficulty scoring this season. They've done that today with Boston College's two goals so far. But here's an eight meter opportunity. It'll be Medjid. Already one goal today. She'll make the pass, beautiful pass and finish. And it's Belle Smith with the goal. And that's just great execution and teamwork off of that eight meter. What a beautiful pass. Sophia LaRose didn't have a shot on that one. There was no way, just really nice, nice job. Beautiful goal, Belle Smith, another New Yorker. Another midfielder, unheralded midfielder that does it all for her team, getting herself on the scoreboard. 31 goals. She scored a goal in all but one game this year. She's had two five-goal games. She's been very good, but she's one of those two midfielders that Coach Walker-Weinstein said, hey, I wouldn't trade him for the world, right? And we talk about the midfield being so important, but you know, both these teams have such a stellar midfield, but Bell Smith, along with Cassidy Weeks, have just been the engine for this Boston yeah. College team. She, when she spoke about them, she did it with so much passion, calling them the engine behind the team and just complimenting, saying they're behind everything this team does and how hard they have to work and how far they have to run and what great shape they're in. Yeah, not only do they, you know, just contribute goals, but also have to defend the best players typically from the opposing team. And also she points out they probably have so many second assists, right? It's not a stat that gets tracked but they a pass, it sets up the pass, it ends up scoring the goal, that's where they usually are. So they have been such a big part. She says she wouldn't trade those two for anybody else in the country. But here comes Duke quickly looking to answer. This Landry had a chance in front, but she goes high. And all started with Maddie Jenner being able to draw to herself, get it out of her stick quickly and create a numbers opportunity for Duke. BC able to break it up that time, and the Blue Devils settle in on offense with under 120 on the clock for the quarter. Yeah, just about a 12-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock here, so Duke can, can work it if they choose to. Up 5-3. Duke's led this entire period, minus a couple minutes where it was tied. Corner up top. Keller's led the way so far for Duke with a pair of goals. Greco and Barry also with a goal as well. Looks like Belle Smith right now with almost a face guard on Mandy Jenner, but Jenner able to secure the ball. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Barry looking for someone. She gets corner, swung around to Landry. Into the middle for DeSimone, but the whistle first. Shooting space violation again created by great ball movement, quick reversal. And Abby Landry, who has had a hat trick in the last two games, really starting to step up and play the way the coaches and her teammates know she can in the last two games. On the eight meter, ready for another opportunity for Duke. Coach Kimmel says one of the best all around players on their team is Landry, but she'll pass off to corner. So there's six seconds left here on the shot clock. Duke, not sure if they're aware. They got to go quick. It's Landry. She'll get a shot off and does squeeze it through Rachel Hall's legs for the goal. As the shot clock goes off with the bounce shot, a really difficult angle, but she finds a way to get that ball into the goal. Shot clock winding down. Three, two, one, release and it squeaks in between the pipe. And you look with this tiny little window for that ball to go in, unbelievable. Rachel Hall was right there. She took the angle away, and somehow that ball found the back of the net.
Yeah, it looked like Call slid her leg off the post there, and that's where Landrew found some opening, but a big goal there to maybe close out this period, and Landry has been very good as of late. And the goal was for her to become one of their clutch players this year. And you know, just a couple of weeks ago, the coaches sat down with her and kind of looked through some of the advanced analytics and kind of showed her, hey, when you're on the field, we're about a plus one. I don't remember if it's plus one or minus one, basically even with you out there and kind of opened her up like, I know I can do more than this. And since then, she's kind of answered the bell and been someone that stepped up for this team. It was kind of like, you know what? You're a great player. Start playing like one. Yeah. And sometimes you need to empower players to do that. You got to tell them. And, and that came not only from the coaches, but from her teammates as well, which may be the most powerful voice. Absolutely. And it's always great to see a player respond to that too, like she has. And at Duke last year, you know, dealt with a lot of injuries in the season and had a couple players step up late. Olivia Corner was one. Katie DeSimone closed out the year really strong. And you know, that's why I asked Coach Kimmel, do you expect someone else to be in that position here as we finish out the regular season? And she pointed to Abby Landry as someone they hoped would kind of step up and raise and elevate their game down the stretch, and, and Landry's done that. So just under five seconds to go here. Boston College will try to sling it down, almost find Charlotte North, but it ends up in the net of LaRose. But a great start for Duke, up 6-3. Katie Keller leads the way for the Blue Devils, a pair of goals, Duke led. Nearly that entire first period is the Blue Devils out to a quick start. We're expecting a lot of offense in this game, but so far the story early on is Sophia LaRose for Duke. Well, when you want to win a big game, you need a big performance from your keeper, and Sophia LaRose really stepping up big for her team. And Boston College with some really uh, high percentage shots in front of Cajun, missing out on those opportunities. But Sophia LaRose so far, the star of the day, saving her team, which from what could be a tie game right now. Yeah, Sophia LaRose dealt with some off-season shoulder surgeries and, you know, missed a lot of time in the off-season just practicing and preparing for this year. And so they've kind of had to ease her back into it as well throughout the year. And I think she's been frustrated at times with where she is, kind of hoping that she was further along or just expecting her to be up to 100%. But obviously you're working back from shoulder surgery, but it looks like she's in a good spot right now. Yeah, she's so athletic, she's quick. And right now she's really got BC's number. Um, Duke been able to do a decent draw job in the draw circle, capitalize on their offensive possessions and really beaten Boston College one-on-one -on -one to the cage on many occasions. So Duke, in control with a 6-3 lead through one period here from Koskinen Stadium. A lot of lacrosse left. Duke's done a really good job early on with Charlotte North as well. She hasn't had a much of an impact these first 15 minutes. That ball bounces around and Olivia Corner trying to win the ground ball. She eventually will and finds her teammate. Kat Berry and Duke will go on the attack early. So the draw control now in the advantage of Duke. Boston College had a 4-1 advantage in that spot early on, but Duke's now won five of the last six draws. And it's made all the difference in this game. Possession is everything in women's lacrosse. Great hustle on the circle by the Duke's draw unit. Really doing a nice job coming up with the ground balls. Duke had seven shots, six of those on goal. You know, you talk about efficiency, 14 shots combined for these two teams, and 13 of those have been on goal. Well, and Coach Kimmel told us the keys to this game would be A, the draw. So far, check, good job. B, tempo control, and Duke's really been able to limit transition to Boston College and control tempo with their transition game and in the half field. And then just the 50-50 balls and the hustle and the offensive efficiency, and Duke's stellar right now on the offensive end. Here's Barry, draws the double team. Cassidy Weeks defending her. Under 10 on the shot clock. Barry. Has to just get it off, and it is knocked off the, the stick, and it will be a reset. Going back and forth on the call here, but it looks like Duke will remain in possession. As long as that shot hits the keeper, the keeper's stick, 
or the cage. That clock will reset to 60 seconds, so Duke with another opportunity to take their time and look for a good shot. Yeah, big break there. Duke didn't have much in the way of shots, and Barry just kind of slung one towards the goal and was able to get the deflection there. Another chance here. And so much is, is talked about with the Boston College's offense, the balance, Charlotte North, their ability to score, but their defense is stellar, as you can see, really making it difficult right now for the Blue Devils to score. I'm sure at that break in quarters, coach got on her team and told them they let up too many, too many easy goals and they really needed to pick up the pressure and clamp down on Duke, and it looks like they've come out with a little bit of renewed energy. Barry looking for Landry in the middle, but it's knocked away. Good defense by Boston College. They forced the turnover now. We'll go the other way quickly. It's Cassidy Weeks. Yeah, great defensive possession there by the Eagles. This feels like a, a pretty crucial quarter maybe for Duke. You know, you think back to that Syracuse game earlier in the year when Duke went up and faced Syracuse in the Carrier Dome, got off to a 9-2 lead in that first period before losing that game and just dropping it by just two goals. So I think you'd like to see, if you're a Duke fan, the Blue Devils follow it up with another solid period here. Yeah, and the sign of a great team is being able to play from start to finish all 60 minutes, you know, and Duke... Uh, BC hasn't come to Durham since 2018. And, you know, anytime you play at home, you come out with a lot of energy. It's, it's you know, senior day today. The Blue Devils coming out strong. But you're right, Ben. You have to be able to maintain that throughout the entire game. And we'll see what the Blue Devils were able to do. Well, Katie Cosgrove defending Charlotte North. The ball got knocked away. Duke crowd wanted that to be no call. Really nice, nice turnout today in Koskinen. Fans packing the stands, cheering as you see. Here comes the drive to goal. Uh, I don't, I don't know about that one. Uh, interesting call there. Hey, your officials today: Lisa Clark, Patty Kletcha Porter, and Barb DiArcangelo conferring there. And now, seems like they're still working things out because the entire field is shifting back down almost the entire team ran down to Duke's end and now they're all back and it looks like it will stay with Boston College here Continue to sort things out. interesting series of events there coach Kimball wants an explanation on what they saw she's clearly not happy and she understands I think everybody here understands today how valuable every possession is Coach Kimmel, over 300 wins. He's been the head coach of this program since its inception. So we'll restart things here with 40, just under 40 left on the shot clock. Blue Devils in their zone. There's North up top. Maddie Johnson playing that rover, closing up the middle. Under 20 seconds on the shot clock for Boston College. Nice 1v1 defense right there. Looking to attack from the top. With just 10 seconds on the shot clock, Boston College finally finds a little room and scores. And that was just a beautiful thread the needle pass as the shot clock was winding down, operating in a small space. Another pass right in front of Cage. Working shot clock, beautiful look right in the middle. Medjid with another score. Assist by Bell Smith, contributing again in all facets of the game, the midfielder. Nice goal by Boston College. Yeah, those two players have been very active today. Medjid, two goals and an assist so far. Bell Smith, one goal and two assists. The Boston College strikes first here in the second. Eight shots on goal so far. Four saves for LaRose, but she couldn't get to that one. As Medjid scores again her 52nd goal so far this year. Jen Medjid had nine goals this year against Louisville. She's clearly an incredibly potent scorer. 
coach telling us what a great IQ she has. Always knows what's going on as Boston College comes up with another draw. Yeah, Courtney Taylor that time, the circle players coming up big for Boston College. And this is what the Eagles were looking for. A goal and another chance here to climb a little bit closer. And Duke's done a good job not letting Boston College string goals together on back-to-back -back possessions. You don't want to let them go on a run. They're so capable. They have so many scores. Whistle blows. I'm going to get another free position here. Bell Smith. Who set the Boston College freshman record for goals and points a year ago. ACC Rookie of the Year in 2021. She's got the eight meter here, goes right at LaRose and gets it by her for the goal. So 6-5, Boston College climbing back into it. Back-to-back -back goals by the Eagle. Great shot off the free position. Opposite pipe, nice shot placement. She gets off the line quickly. Just puts it in the low corner. We've got a one goal game. What you'd expect to see from second-ranked Boston College, the defending champs, played in four straight championship games. They respond here to start to second. 6-5, so we'll see what Duke can do. Again, it all seems to kind of begin right here at the draw, which has been even 6-6 six to six so far. BC's coach, Acacia Walker-Weinstein, has participated in 17 of the last 18 NCAA tournaments, either as a coach or a player. Four straight title game appearances, appearances, as you said, winning it all finally last year. Such just a run of success for the young coach. Jenner shows you why she's so good at the draw, gets it up to herself, uses that length to corral it and gets it off to Barry to start the attack. So Jenner gets Duke a possession once again. Also a big game for the Blue Devils because you're talking about a senior day, final game for a, a class that has done a lot for this program. A number of, of fifth year players that got that extra year of eligibility and a group that, that has talked about all year. They kind of want to finish what they started. Made a good run last year, but I know they, they have high hopes and expectations this year. And senior day, emotions and energy are always so high, not only for the seniors, but for their teammates. They want to get this win, and nothing would be better for this graduating class than a win against reigning national champions. Callahan drops it off to Greco. She'll work. Got a face guard on De Simone right now. Hausler found a little space in front of the cage, but Barry couldn't find her. Yeah, De Simone's been a little quiet so far. She's been very active for this team, but Boston College has done a good job defending her. They're yeah, really making it difficult for her to even get her stick on the ball. With the Blue Devils with a free position opportunity. Shooting a little over 47% on the season. It's Lexi Schmaltz, the junior. She goes right at the cage. Hall tries to kick save, but can't get to it, and Schmaltz capitalizes. And another Blue Devil in the scoring column. The variety continues, the balance attack. She gets off the line quickly, bounces that one into the upper right-hand corner. Blue Devils with the two goal lead. Schmaltz, her eighth goal this year. And she only had one point in the past six games. So nice to see her break through. And that's that's been a key for this Duke team. For them, maybe it's to take that next step. Coach Kimmel's talked about that second line of midfielders being a little more productive, contributing more offensively. And Schmaltz is one of those players. So that is something that Coach Kimmel would like to see here in this one. A lot of players for this Duke team are still with potential and room to grow and will continue to get better day by day as the season progresses. But right now, Duke with six different players in the scoring column, showing the balanced attack that they have. Yeah, it's been a big challenge for, I think, a lot of teams, right, is managing rosters when you have 
these players for the extra year of eligibility. So we have a green card. So Boston College will take possession here. It's Courtney Taylor. She has so many players on both these rosters down, down a ways that you just try to find time for, but it's just hard to manage. I mean, I don't think uh, Coach Walker Weinstein would ever anticipated having Charlotte North for an extra year, right? But having a special talent like that takes away time for other, other players. So a face-off violation on Alsler of Duke. So one minute penalty here. So off, off the goal, Boston College, a chance with an advantage to get one right back. And Coach Kimmel telling us how talented her freshman class is because of the COVID year and players not graduating, they haven't gotten a lot of playing time this season. And so it's been really important that the upperclassmen are cognizant of being positive with the freshmen, growing the freshmen, supporting the freshmen. And she said her team this year is so self-led. They've done such a great job with that. And a beautiful passing sequence by Boston College, side to side, right in front of the cage for the easy look. Yeah, imagine a hat trick today. And Boston College wastes little time with that advantage to get one right back, making it 7-6. And those are the easy looks that you really get in the first quarter. Just beautiful ball movement. Imagine it's just standing there by herself on the crease for the easy shot. Riley Trainer, the freshman a little bit late getting to Medjid. She's too good to be left alone right there. Medjid carrying the load thus far, but Bell Smith, two goals, three assists already for Boston College as well. Charlotte North just one shot so far. Credit the Blue Devil defense with that, but you know, Boston College doesn't even need Charlotte North to score to be successful because they have so many potent offensive players. She's great icing on the cake, and, and she can certainly come through in the clutch when they need her, but that's what's great about North. She lets her teammates do the work. She shares the ball, and she scores, and they need her to score. She does a great job getting the ball to her teammates off the draw, and Boston College going quickly. Here's Caitlin Mossman. Another senior attack. That one knocked away. Good turnover that time, forced by Maddie Johnston of Duke. Great job by Maddie Johnston. We talked about her. She had two ACL tears during her career. She was cleared this year in preseason. Had a bunch of takeaways at UVA and really starting to step up her game, getting healthier and healthier as we've got a turnover this way, going back to Boston College. Sophia LaRose tried to make the really long outlet pass. I think Keller. Maybe just didn't anticipate how long that was going to go. She had kept running. It looked like it might have been right on, right in stride, but instead it goes over her and they get it right back to Boston College. Five turnovers today for the Blue Devils, just two thus far for Boston College. So we've got a yellow card issued on the field. Two minute releasable. And Boston College now with an opportunity with the player up opportunity to tie this game. It's Katie Keller, she'll take a seat. She has a couple of goals today for Duke. Boston College a chance to even it up. Here's a look at what happened. Towards her head, anything towards the head and neck area. Point of emphasis. No, she didn't hit anything. The officials blew the whistle, yellow card, and Boston College now with an advantage. Yeah, it's all about protecting the players, player safety, and although there might not have been a lot of contact, still maybe a dangerous play. But either way, it's a two-minute woman up advantage for Boston College. They scored on an advantage just a couple minutes ago. Now another chance here. Down just one goal, looking to even it up right now on this eight meter opportunity. Rose trying to find the ball. She does, she gets the save again. So 
LaRose, her first save of the period, fifth of the game. And that's really key, because this will let Duke, if they can get this ball through this ride, get, get into their half field set, and really try to use this clock up to end this penalty. See Riley Trainer bringing it across. And you're right, a chance to just about run out that advantage here. Riley Trainer, probably the only freshman for Duke that really gets significant playing time. A true defender, you can see her build. She's strong, she's tough. Coach Kimmel telling us she really knows how to play angles. And the Blue Devils just gonna work this ball, let this penalty run out, and probably look to take a shot towards the end of the shot clock. Certainly don't want to give it back to BC with the player up opportunity. Sure don't. Players looking over, De Simone looking over at the clock, seeing where it stands. 22 seconds to operate here. Be a big chance to close out this advantage. 10 seconds now. Duke will have to work. It's Callahan. She go across to corner. Corner with five seconds on the shot clock. She's double teamed. It's knocked away. Boston College causes a turnover. Great defense by BC late in the shot clock. That went up. Does stay with Duke as the bad pass gets chased down by Rachel Hall. So the advantage is over. And now Duke with a fresh 90. And that's just unfortunate for the Eagles. They had just a great defensive stand there, finishing it with that nice double, knocking the ball loose. But Duke rallies back, gets it, gets that ball and another opportunity in their offensive end to make this a two-goal game. Duke just one goal so far here in the second after six in the first. They really just haven't had a lot of opportunities thus far. Uh, the Boston College defense really just has tightened up where those in the first quarter they were getting beat. They were beat several times one on one and, and really they've closed the gaps. They've closed the straight line drives. They've double teamed the ball. They've forced turnovers. Here comes a quick double, quick reversal. And there's the shooting space call. Nice pass out of the double team to create that opportunity. Skip past to Callahan, draws that violation, and now she'll get that eight meter. Callahan with a goal already today. She'll go high and fire it past Hall. Wow. A rifle on that one. Callahan, she didn't have to wind up. She just set that shot free, drains it in the back of the net. The Blue Devil faithful are going wild. She's got it, she lets it go, finishes high, right past the sticker, Rachel Hall. Great goal. That was a beautiful goal by Callahan, 19th goal of the season, her second goal today. So Boston College just on the verge of evening it back up, but Duke, another goal makes it 8-6. Well, the Duke women's lacrosse team getting support from their fellow student athletes and the soccer players out in attendance and celebrate these senior day festivities. They'll do some stuff after the game, but right now all attention is focused on the defending champs, second ranked Boston College, and Duke's gotten off to a good start here. 8-6 lead, just under five minutes to go in the half. You kind of felt like that goal that Duke scored there was, was a big one to kind of Grab momentum back a little bit. Yeah, Boston College had been able to string a couple goals together, and the Blue Devils stopped the bleeding there. And it's just such a beautiful day for a lacrosse game. It's 73 degrees here in Durham. The sun's out. Stands are packed for this all-important match between two of the top 10 teams in the country as Jenner, again, able to draw to herself and get the ball to the Blue Devils. Here they come in transition. So Duke out of that, that break. It's Carner, she goes low. Big save that time for Hall, her second today. And Duke still being aggressive. Got a good look there for Carner, but Hall comes up big. Now the long outlet pass. Carner, kind of a no look, knocks it down, but it's scooped right up by Boston College and they'll settle in on offense. Hey, you mentioned a beautiful day. A little bit of pollen in the air too. I think Coach Kimmel even <laughs> mentioned practice has been hard. 
for those for the players that aren't from this area that don't deal with those the pollen as much in the spring but allergies kicking in it makes the workouts and practice a little bit tougher it really does we are hopefully on the tail end of the pollen infusion in durham <laughs> even our boxes here in the press box coated with yellow but it is a beautiful day and a great game so far just a two goal game dukes had a three goal lead they had that after the first was over, but that's been the biggest lead so far. Boston College has not led so far, and they won't get a chance here to close the gap. It's Maddie Johnston with her second cause turnover today. She has done a great job on the defensive side. Redshirt Junior, she just continues to show her defensive skill with another key takeaway. So coming down the stretch here in this first half, Kind of feels like a big time in this game. Can Duke maybe stretch it out a little bit? Or does Boston College close that gap, maybe even tie it up by halftime? Feels like this is a critical few minutes here for both teams. Yeah, we could have a big momentum swing here for the Blue Devils if they can score on this possession. Blue Devil defense is playing so well today. Both these defenses, these units, they're just so strong. Anna Callahan gets around a defender. She gets contact inside and gets the shot off. But, man, tough player. All these girls are tough, but that shot that time. Coach Kimmel wanted a whistle. There, she's going to get it on that one. Knocked to the ground. You can see how physical the play is right now. She's a little bit slow to get up. It's Katie D. Simone. She hasn't had the ball in her stick a whole lot for the leading goal scorer, Duke. The team's over there helping her get up, hoping she's okay. She seemed to go down a little awkwardly that time. So we see another look at what happens here. She gets contact. And you see, oh, a little ankle roll right there, and she gets knocked to her, knocked off her feet, but a little slow to get up, a little limp. That could be uh, important for, for Duke, their leading scorer, their leader. Yeah, she is a big part of this team, and some tells me she'll she'll be back. She is one of the toughest players out there. You see all year that she takes a lot of contact and is able to finish through that contact, and she'll come off and sure get some treatment, but I know Duke will want to see her back in, and she's a big part of this offense. But Blue Devils will now have this eight-meter opportunity. It's Landry. One goal today. She goes right at Hall, goes low to score for Duke. Abby Clutch Landry coming in, making it happen. Abby Landry trying to make it three straight hat tricks. She's got two goals today and crowd on their feet as Duke makes it a 9-6 game. You gotta love that. Off the bench for Nisa Simone comes in, gets the ball, puts it in the net. Crowd goes wild, widen the lead. Abby Landry continues to contribute to her team towards the end of the season, coming big time for the Blue Devils down the stretch. Eight goals and two plus games for Landry. And a big one for Duke as De Simone comes off. We'll see what her status will be, but she'll need other players like Landry stepping up, and she does there. So Duke. Stretches it back out to three. It's matching its largest lead today. Two and a half to go. Back to the draw. It's Jenner versus North. Sticks are in order. That one will go to Boston College. The Eagles trying to strike quickly. Get a look right in front of the net before Duke could get set defensively. And although they only had two players in attack, Boston College is able to score. Looks like a violation in the draw circle by Maddie Jenner. Boston College picks it up and quickly. And this is what they do so well. And we haven't seen a lot of this today. Just in transition, they explode to the golds, pick it up, turn and go. Quick pass and a drive and another quick pass, and bing, bang, boom, score. Kayla Martello, the midfielder, 
And it was just Mossman didn't wait for her team to get down there. She saw the opportunity, got it to Martello, and she finishes it. Finishes it. That, that was a quick strike. That's one of the advantages now as the as the the rules in women's lacrosse, they just continue to evolve. The shot clock coming in in you know, 2016, 2017, but then the no more stoppage of play on the whistle. You can just get it quickly and go. Boston College taking full advantage of that. So just 12 seconds in between that last Duke goal and Boston College's goal. And Barry scoops up the draw for Duke. There's Cosgrove, near side to Callahan, and Duke will get it across. Now they'll go quick, it's Heinemann. She'll slow it up. Just over two minutes, the pass almost taken away. Instead, it's Greco gets a chance and she scores. Look at that. Another near interception turns into a goal. Right back at you for Duke. And Sydney Scales, the sophomore, the great defender for Boston College, goes for an interception. She overplays this. She goes for it. She doesn't get it. And that just creates that wide open opportunity for Greco for another goal on the day for her. We saw it happen to Duke earlier. Almost got the interception Biscardi did that turned into a Boston College goal. Now it's Duke flipping the script. Man, we've seen some high-level lacrosse to get us to this point. 10-7, Duke. Even the smallest mistakes. That was when you paid the price for. That was risky to go for that steal. And if you're going to go for it, you can't overplay it like that. you got to be able to stay in position and just left Greco one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And Jenner coming up with the draw to herself. And here come the doubles. So Duke now with a full shot clock can get this one just about down to the half. But Duke has been aggressive. Three goal lead. Duke can get to four, it'd be its largest lead and would be a big, big burst getting into halftime. Well, we knew this was gonna be a close one and a uh, four-goal lead for the Blue Devils going into the half would be significant. And we know Boston College, you go into the half, you make adjustments, and you come back firing. As we said, Charlotte North has been so limited in this game, and you have to credit the Blue Devil defense, but you know you're not going to keep her down for an entire game. Yeah, that's the thing with this game is, you know, you're, you're still – it's a three-goal game, and Charlotte North hasn't done much of anything, just one shot, one draw control. But – you know, it's not a surprise. I mean, even last game, last time out, she was held scoreless in the first half, but try to do it for 60 minutes is a, is a tall order. Now the leading scorer in the country and arguably one of the best players in the history of the game as the worm burner goes in. Anna Callahan from the top. Another goal for the Blue Devils. Anna Callahan scored a couple from distance today, and that one was a beauty for the Blue Devils. Huge leader, Anna Callahan. Little, little fake. Gets her hands free. Beautiful shot down low, bounces up. Right past Rachel Hall. 11-7. Duke extending its lead. Boston College, every time they've gotten to within a goal, Duke has seemed to tack one on and answer the bell. They've done it again. And they've done it with incredible efficiency on offense. And Coach Kimmel, again, telling us how important that would be, taking full advantage when they have possession of the ball. Win the draw. Use your possessions. Duke's done that. And they'll try to do it one more time. Just under 30 seconds, Duke will get one more chance, possibly here, on offense. 11-7. Cosgrove trying to find space, but she throws it away. Might not be the worst result, though, as time ticks away. Under 10 seconds to go here. Hall's trying to call for it. We'll sling it downfield. Final few seconds here. We'll run off from Koskinen Stadium. So the Duke Blue Devils off to its best start in more than 15 years. Have won eight straight, and they're going to carry an 11-7 lead into halftime. 
been a great half, back and forth. Probably more than we've expected in this uh, high scoring contest, but both teams have not disappointed, but it's been the balance of the Blue Devils and the efficiency on offense that's been key in this one. And the last time they showed a half, February 23rd against UVA, a one goal deficit at half, they ended up winning by seven. So we'll see what adjustments get made here at halftime. But we talked about the two highest scoring offenses in the country coming in. Well, they haven't disappointed so far, 11 to seven led by three different players for Duke with two goals, Landry, Keller, and Greco. I'm Brian Hare. And I'm Vanessa Woods, and we study puppies. puppies. Actually, only one other group has ever attempted anything like this that we're aware of. And we didn't stop and think, why is that? We're like, oh, well, let's, well, let's, let's do it. The Duke Puppy Kindergarten is a Head Start program for uh, puppies, service dog puppies, and we are trying to figure out how to help them figure out who will be a good service dog. So we start studying the puppies when they're eight weeks old, and uh, we have them from their period of most rapid brain development. So until they're about 18, 20 weeks old. So, so how we do it is, first of all, we need a lot of help from undergraduates. A lot of volunteers lot of volunteer are helping us raise <laughs> these dogs on campus. So a lot of people are giving a lot of love to these young puppies. Um, and then the second thing we're doing is we're playing games with them. Uh, problem solving games, games that measure their emotional response to new things. A lot of the games that we're playing with dogs were actually developed by psychologists who were studying human infants. We call them games and we don't call them tests because, um, you know, the, the puppy has to really want to do it. There's, there's a lot of them. We are also taking them all over campus to socialize them with people and places that hopefully will give them confidence. Don is the unofficial mascot of the women's basketball team. He's the first, the first male, male member. Yeah. So that's been really sweet. And the puppies actually go to the hospital, um, you know, several times a week, um, three, four times a week. So it's helpful to all the people the puppies go visit, but it's actually also uh, has a purpose for the puppies because we want the puppies to leave here with confidence and how and you some can of them build. want to spend time in hospitals That's right. later. Well, at the end of 20 weeks, our puppies graduate. <laughs> they graduate the kindergarten. That's really- Certificate. They get, they a, get certificate. a certificate. They have like a ceremony. And so it's a way for the puppies to say thank you and also a way for them to say goodbye. So they go on to be placed with what Canon Company, it's called Puppy Raisers. And then at 24 months, they turn into college. Mm -hmm. And then that's where the real test begins. Um, and then they go through all the coursework of becoming a service dog and find out if they're gonna make it or not. Yeah, so uh, it, on the outside of what we're doing, it's like puppies are running around campus. It's adorable. Um, you know, I think some people are surprised to learn that we actually are funded by the federal government. <laughs> um, the, both Department of Defense and the National Institute of Health have funded uh, the research we're doing. And it's because it's a very difficult problem to um, measure individual differences in cognitive or psychological measures and then try to make a prediction about something, uh, uh, some individual's behavior in the future. We're funded really um, uh, because there is a problem in society where dogs are amazing at helping us solve problems, um, but there's not enough of them. So that's really at, at its core what it's about. It's about understanding how dogs develop so we can help more people in need. In a well-played first half for both teams, but Duke, a four-goal advantage over second-ranked Boston College, the defending champs. Duke been led by Callahan with a hat trick, and Charlotte North for Boston College held to just one shot and one draw control in that first half. We'll have the second half next here on ACC Network Extra. Duke may be playing its best half of the season so far. 11-7 lead over Boston College after the first 30 minutes. And they, they've done so on both ends, starting defensively, making it very difficult for Boston College. 
Every possession is so invaluable in this game, and Duke has done a good job forcing turnovers. Boston College starting out with a very uncharacteristic turnover, which lets the great defense here by redshirt junior Maddie Johnson, able to knock that ball free twice in a row to keep possession for the Devils. The Nana Callahan, her second hat trick of the year so far. She got it in the first half. Why Duke's been so successful in this half is the balanced scoring. Six different players contributing. Callahan contributing three with that great shot to end the half. A couple long distance shots for Callahan and Duke able to have the four goal lead. As you see, six different goal scorers. We know both teams can do it from a number of different players. Medjid, though, we, we expected her to have a big game and she's done so, so far. She really has. She's been the steady offensive player for Boston College. It'll be interesting to see how Charlotte North, their, their leader, the best player in the country, how she comes to play in the second half. As we mentioned, Boston College did trail February 23rd against Virginia, 10 to nine, ended up winning that game by seven goals. So this Boston College team has a lot of experience in difficult games, four straight national championship appearances, finally winning it last year. And we know this team is resilient. So we'll see what adjustments are made by Keisha Walker Weinstein this half. But Duke will start off on offense. We've seen the Blue Devils just be very aggressive today. And the draw has been such a big part of it. They've been fantastic on the circle. And that ball, you know, Jenner can draw to herself clearly, and she's gotten several that way. But when that ball goes down on the grass, the Blue Devils have come up with it. I mean, you talk about how good these both these teams are, especially offensively. And this game's been played very well. Uh, but you look at the one stat, and we've kind of talked about it throughout. As Jenner fires, wastes no time. Maddie Jenner, the draw control specialist, also has an offensive game as well. Queen of the draw now with a goal, and they set her up, and she goes to her left hand, and with her 6-2 height advantage, she's able to just get that brush screen and go to goal, switch to her left, and score. Great stick work and a great shot by Maddie Jenner. With that extra height, she can get her hands free and score like that. You know, most players in lacrosse are draw control specialists. We have two today that both also contribute elsewhere, but Jenner has worked really hard on her offense, her shooting, and it's paid off so far this year as she has 26 goals. That was a big one to give Duke a five-goal lead. She becomes the seventh scorer for the Blue Devils today, and it's been really fun to watch Maddie Jenner grow as a player and develop her game over the course of her time at Duke, develop her stick work, her shooting ability, and there she is, draw to herself, get it out of her stick, quick ball movement, Blue Devils have an opportunity in transition here, but you see Boston College hustle back. Carner drops it down to Greco. And Jenner's been really good too in the second half, adjusting at the draw. She's She does a really good job of seeing what the opponents are doing and making adjustments. She really studies that position so well. She's off to a good start. Also of note, Katie DeSimone back in, she left late in that first half after kind of rolling her ankle a little bit, but she's back out there. Good to see for Duke. And important to have their leader. <laughs> Beautiful pass, and the Blue Devils scoring barrage continues. Right on cue, right? Deso, her first goal of the game. Her first shot as well. She was quiet in the first half, but the ankle's obviously not bothering her. And just a beautiful pass by Eva Greco. She's got her goals, but she also feeds Katie DeSimone, just able to get a little back cut there, get some daylight, clear her stick. Greco with a beautiful assist, and DeSimone with her 52nd goal of the season, her first one today. Another scorer for Duke. She takes the team lead back in goals from Kat Berry, who evened her up early on in this one. But Duke, you wanted to see how they would come out. And that's two quick goals to start. And all of a sudden, it's a 13-7 game. Boston College, though, gets the draw. It's fun watching Boston College run out that draw. They just look right at the net, it seems like, and look for scoring opportunities right away. Yeah, they just go. It looked like they, Cassidy Weeks looked like she was wide open right in front of Cage, but the pressure defense didn't allow her to see that pass. 
Let's see if Boston College has an answer here to Duke's quick start in the second half. First chance here for Boston College in half number two on offense. Trainer working defensively there. Boston College. You see the face guard on Jed Medjid. You know, not always. I like I like the call. You know, it's not like you necessarily have to face guard Charlotte North, the best player, but let's put a face guard on Medjid and see how they respond to that. Medjid has been such an offensive force in this game. Here's Charlotte North. He'll take her second shot of the game, and she is scoreless no longer. North beats the defender for the goal. And she makes it look so incredibly easy. Just a quick dodge, quick step. Just watch this. Just a little hesitation, a little fake inside, shot fake, and that's an easy score for her. And Charlotte North has gotten herself in the scoring column with her 64th goal on the season. Quiet first half, but North Gets on the board here. And I'm sure there's probably a little pressure on her as well coming back here. We talk about, you know, for Duke and, and this team going against her as she started her career here in Durham. But I'm sure there's a little pressure on her coming back for the first time. They were set to play here in 2020. Obviously, that season was cut short due to COVID. So this is her first time back since she left in 2019. Yeah, always emotional on both sides. But, you know, she's, uh, she's a Pandora's box. You do not want to open right now. And you don't want to get her, let her get going. She is a big difference maker for Boston College. And Duke did a great job in the first half keeping her quiet. She just showed you right there how easy it is for her to score and how explosive she is. And that's also what she does really well. She's able to deliver the ball where she wants to off the draw. And her teammates are there to pick her up. So Boston College wins another one. Eagle fans wanting a little, it looked like a little stick to the head right there, but no call by the officials. And you're right, Charlotte North does a really nice job directing the draw where she wants it to go. Got a total of 31 shots in this game, 28 shots on goal. Boston College, that shot on the last possession that went over the top was the first one they hadn't put on goal so far. And LaRose has, we talked about, been very good. She had four saves in that first five for the game. Here's Medjid, a hat trick so far today. Blue Devils back in the zone, knocking that pass down in front of the cage. Boston College comes back up with the rebound. Player down for Duke on that pass into the middle. Look like maybe somebody caught a stick potentially. So we'll stop play, check on her. Play has been pretty physical today. So yeah, Natalie Kahn, one of the experienced defenders here, grad student. Here's a look at what happened. The ball goes right into the heart of the defense. Looks like she takes it right in the face. The ball hits her in the face, ouch. How tough is she? She gets back up. She's gonna take a little while to go to the sideline and get it looked at. I'm sure she'll be right back in the game. Yeah, she's getting some treatment on the sideline. So one of the Fifth-year defenders for Duke. Off. Boston College down by five. Nice coverage by Duke right now. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Here's North. Kind of take it upon herself here. She draws the whistle. Much to the dismay of the crowd. But Charlotte North seems to maybe say, hey, I need to maybe take some more of this on and really step up here. We've seen her a lot more active this half. Yeah, I'm sure at halftime she was told to, you know, start to contribute a little bit more. The fans didn't like that call. It was from our angle. I didn't see a whole lot, but you'll see Charlotte North as she can wind up and she's got a rifle, but she misses the entire cage. She does, and her teammates right there to back her up. That one denied at the doorstep. How about that? North, another chance, gets turned away. LaRose pumps her fist after the big save. LaRose is like, no, no, not on my watch. Charlotte North on the doorstep, standing on the crease, and LaRose steps up for another gigantic save, and the Blue Devils are in transition. A little uh, 
altercation over there, well, not an altercation, but I think just ran through a screen. So foul on Boston College. Duke's gonna get the ball back, and we go. Here comes that pass to Charlotte North. What a catch. She goes for it, and LaRose saves another one. How athletic by Charlotte North, though, to grab that ball. Yeah, she's had a couple of big saves, too, LaRose has with on North there. Also, Medjid was right there as well on the crease. So Duke now, five goal lead. It's Callahan goes over the top. She's feeling pretty good right now. Ooh, she fired that one. D. Simone right there to back it up. D. Simone trying to turn the corner. Great defense by the Eagles. Scott Berry, one goal today for Duke. Leading point scorer for this Blue Devil team. Sydney Scales, the sophomore defender for Boston goes down. College. And she's really done a great job on Dee Simone today, making it her life difficult at every step. She has. And it makes it difficult for Callahan there. And Boston College energetic after the turnover. Nice double, knocking that ball loose. Sydney Scales. Clears it for Boston College. It's Bell Smith, who's also having a good game today. Two goals, three assists for the sophomore. She directs her team. Boston College doesn't find itself in this position very often. Duke's defense making it difficult. Just making shot angles difficult, and that's what the goal, if you're a keeper, that's what you want in front of you, a defense that really creates difficult shot opportunities for the offense. Thirty seconds here on the shot clock. We've had some long offensive possessions by both teams, really testing the opponent's defense. Down to 15 seconds. Here comes Bell Smith. That one almost saved, but it gets by Kennedy Everson, who just checked in as well for Sophia LaRose. In cage for Duke, the freshman, unable to make the save there, and she'll come off and make way to LaRose again. And the double came as the shot clock was winding down by the Blue Devils. So here comes the double. It's a beautiful quick pass, and the ball just squeaks by. Everson almost able to get to it, but Holly Schleicher gets it by her, and again, another assist from Bell Smith, her fourth today. So Boston College has made it a four-goal game. So the Blue Devils get off to a quick start here in the second half, but Boston College gets two back, keeps it to a four-goal game. Midway through the third here, Duke on top, 13-9 over second-ranked Boston College. Duke had a six-goal lead, which matched the largest deficit for Boston College all season. They also trailed by six against North Carolina. But since that time, Boston College has scored two straight and now wins another draw. Cassidy Weeks, the nice scoop up. She's got a lane to goal. She gets forced away. And we, you know, we talk about the draw so much, but it just feels like this game has gone truly. Who wins the draw has the advantage, and Charlotte North won the draw for Boston College, and she scores on the other side. The Eagles showing why they're defending champs. Three quick goals, making it 13-10. And that's an isolation play for Charlotte North, and you're not going to be able to play one-on-one -on -one with Queen of the North. That stick work, the slide, just not there. No help side. She just beats her player to the goal. Katie Cosgrove kind of gets left in the dust. She gets inside, and that's easy for her. And Charlotte North needs more than single-player attention. 
North starting to come alive here in the second half. Two goals on four shots here in the second half. She had 10 goals against Virginia Tech last season. I mean, she is a, just a potent and versatile scorer. All eyes have to be on her, whether you're off ball or on ball. You have to know where Charlotte North is at all times. She only has one draw control to her name, but she set up her teammates very well, and it's just a 13-11 advantage for Duke. But Jenner is able to fling that one high, and Kat Berry comes down with it. Again, the draw has been huge for both of these teams. And what the Blue Devils have done well in this game is they haven't let Boston College string too many back-to-back -to -back goals together quickly. They've stopped the bleeding. They've responded. They've answered with a goal. If they can continue to do this and maintain this three-goal cushion, it's going to become very interesting down the stretch. It will. We've seen Duke respond on most occasions today when Boston College has gone on a little run. Still a three-goal lead here, but three straight goals by Boston College. Start to feel the momentum shifting a little bit here in Durham. Here's Barry. Duke taking his time, being patient on offense. The more time they use on offense, the less time Boston College has the ball. So I just, again, the tempo control has been really key, and Duke has done a nice job controlling the game in that aspect. 20 seconds in the shot clock. Duke working it all the way down, but Corner eventually gets it knocked away. The fight for it has come, comes away with Boston College possession. It's Bell Smith who takes it. Another turnover for Duke, and credit the Boston College defense right there. Patient, playing, disciplined, good slides, good sticks, good feet, and here comes transition. They have numbers. Shot goes over the top. It's Cassidy Weeks. You know, if, oh. if Duke comes out with this win, Boston College is going to go back and look at the missed opportunities that they've had on Cage, which really is uncharacteristic for them. Turnover. Duke, a big stop. A couple of defensive stops here in this game. Maddie Johnson again. She's just wreaked havoc on the Boston College offense. Forcing turnovers, a bad pass right there. Good pressure in the ride by BC. Going to get a whistle. Back and forth game right now. And you're to your credit, yeah, Maddie, Maddie Johnson, three caused turnovers today to go along with four ground balls. Pretty impressive, and we still have a long way to go. Leads the team in both of those categories today. She's making her second straight start on defense for Duke. He's without Kay Conway, one of the regular starters who's dealing with an injury. It's great when you get the call to step in and, and, and you make such an impact. And as we said, Maddie, you know, played through two ACL tears. You got a whistle right there. I'm gonna get a, I think we're going to get a yellow card on this one. Stick to the head. Fans don't like it, but I think we could see it from up here. Looks like it's going to be on Abby Landry. Replay here. Here goes Landry. Oh, I don't know. Went over the top of her head. She got a piece of the stick. That's a tough one. It's one of those where they're going to, it's going to err on the side of Caution offensive and player. Yeah, yep. exactly. Lacrosse is all about safety. I mean, all the only gear we have on are those little headsets, and those are those are new goggles, I guess, whatever you want to call them. But uh, it's all about safety, so the officials always looking to enforce that and take care of the players. So an advantage here, two-minute advantage, Charlotte North. See if she even wastes any time. She thought about it. Still a three-goal game, so no rush for Boston College right now with this two-minute. Looking to get a good shot. Duke's been able to burn one of these two-minute advantages for Boston College. The Eagles did score on their first opportunity, though. Here comes a shot. Down low, LaRose is able to corral it. What a save by the senior. She does it again. She has come up big multiple times today. The second player up opportunity foiled by LaRose. 
Wow, what a great day for the senior. Even more importantly too, Duke able to run off this advantage here if they can maintain possession for the next minute. Good look, but LaRose comes up big. Seven stays today. She's faced 21 shots total. Only allowed 10 goals to this stout Eagles offense. Carner loses it briefly. Looks to go, but backs it out. Just being patient with that advantage. Wants to milk it. Might have had a chance there, but. And under 30 seconds left in the penalty. Blue Devils doing a nice job taking care of the ball. Duke just two goals in this period so far after 11 in the first half. Went up on 10 seconds here. Duke will look to go. The advantage will run off. Now here come the Blue Devils. Barry spins right, goes to the ground and scores. What about that by Cat Barry? Some fancy footwork on the crease by Cat Barry as the shot clock ticks away. Down to three seconds. Turns the corner. Gets her defender on her hip, pivots back to her right, and finds the opposite post. This is a beautiful goal. Just gets a little bit of space there and threads the needle. Puts it on the left pipe. Wow, for her 52nd goal of the season. Kat Barry, the graduate student. Just, just a great shot and a timely shot to keep this four-goal cushion for the Blue Devils. Yeah, an angle much like that Abby Landry goal earlier. Just not a lot there, but Barry's able to find space and deliver. And you're right, that was timely. Able to run off that advantage, take it away from Boston College, and then score a goal on top of it and make this a four-goal lead once again. A big, big minute and a half right there for Duke. How about the clock management by the Blue Devils today? I mean, several times now that they've been able to just get that clock down into single-digit seconds and come up with the score. And it has been a... Heavyweight battle in the draw. Jenner comes away with that one. That's her eighth draw control today. Maddie Jenner just adding to her single season record. Already the draw control all time leader for this Duke program. She's fourth in NCAA history right now. First among active players, a chance to become the reigning queen before she graduates. The longer the Blue Devils play into the NCAA and the ACC tournament, nice pass in front, knock down, get a whistle. Blue Devils gonna get another shot at the eight meter to create a five goal lead. Caroline DeBellis, the junior out of Cold Spring Harbor, New York, will get the eight meter. She'll pass it quickly. And it's step, stepped in front of by Rachel Hall. She read that one the entire way. And she makes a huge play. The outlet pass quickly to Bell Smith, and here comes Boston College. They like to run. A look at the effort by Schmaltz to knock it away. Good defensive effort, but the whistle is blown. Nice job by Boston College to break up that play off the eight meter. Cute passing sequence that almost worked. So Duke up four, same margin as it was at halftime. Can they close out this court, this period with that four goal lead? Boston College will try to add another one here before time expires. 25 seconds. The zone has been really, really stingy today for Duke. And taking away driving lines, closing up gaps. Coming up on 10 seconds. Here's Bell Smith to Charlotte North. She gets doubled. Five seconds. She finds the teammate, the pass. Duke, good defensively. LaRose gets another body part on it to knock it away as time expires. Her teammates come and give her a pat on the back. We appreciate what you're doing right now, Sophia LaRose. She comes up big again for Duke. The Eagles try to climb back, but Duke keeps it a four goal lead after three.
Duke just 15 minutes away from its biggest win of the year so far. And if they can get there, it's going to be thanks in part to goalie Sophia LaRose. And if you want to win a big game, you have to have a big game, huge game from your keeper. And check out saves by Sophia in this one. She's got eight on the day. She's been all over the place. You can see her quickness, her reaction time, her athleticism. And she has come up huge for the Blue Devils in this one. It has indeed. And Duke, the four-goal lead. Definitely the position you want to be in, but far from a comfortable lead right here with 15 minutes left. Um, Boston College, we said here's the two top offensive scoring teams in the country. Boston College, multiple offensive weapons, multiple attackers, the opportunity to score quickly. Duke hasn't allowed that today, so let's see if Duke is able to maintain control of possession, use the clock in their favor, and continue to score and defend the way they've been doing it for most of the game. Well, Duke has a 15-11 advantage on draw controls, and we know that's going to be a big key to this final 15 minutes. If Boston College wants to come back, they have to win some, and they get the first to start. Boston College, 22 shots. Only five turnovers today. They played a pretty clean game for the most part, but Sophia LaRose has been a difference. Charlotte North did score her first two goals of the game in that third. She's been more aggressive. She's got it now. Rolls it over to Medjid, who's got a hat trick today. An opening right for the net behind the back shot. Wow. What a beautiful pass right in front of the cage. And the behind the back shot to the opposite post. There's a highlight for you. Beautiful cut, beautiful shot, beautiful goal, good teamwork, nicely done. Boston College cutting into this lead. We've got a three goal game. That's a freshman right there. Boston College is McKenna Davis, 13 goals this season. She's played in every game so far. She's been playing well too, 10 goals over her past seven games. Make that 11 now. And that's a big one to start this period for Boston College. Well, and Coach Walker Weinstein telling us how talented McKenna Davis is and how they've been pushing her to do more and be more of a, a scorer. They're like, she's just like such a great talent, but she's quiet at times. And a lot of that's being a freshman when you have a lot of upperclassmen who are who are so good, but they're really trying to get more out of her. And she's answered the call right there with that beautiful shot. So just 36 seconds in, Boston College cuts it to three. 14-11. Duke's been up by as many as six goals today. We've also had a seven goal lead against Syracuse earlier this year. The only loss so far for the Blue Devils up at the Carrier Dome. Lost that one by two. And now we'll look to hold on here in a big matchup, too, for the ACC as we are just a couple games away here. One more to play for Duke and Boston College to figure out who's going to be maybe the one, number one overall. Well, Definitely a battle for number two right now. Such a fine line. You, you think, you know, Duke loses a two-goal game to Syracuse. Boston College loses a one-goal game to UNC. Syracuse loses a two-goal game to UNC. These top four teams, it's just, it's, it's just going to be who shows up on the, the day they play. Great keeper play, great defense. Carter loses the defense, but Hall makes her biggest save today. It's a huge save. That was a point-blank shot. Rachel Hall falls on the ball, stopping that one. Bell Smith quickly working. Boston College goes fast. And that one, if Boston College comes back, I think that's one you want to earmark because Corner had lost her defender, a little mix up on defense, and had a one on one with Rachel Hall. And Hall makes her third save of the game and keeps Corner out of the back of the net there. That was huge. Big time, big time save. And Big time effort by the Blue Devils to get back in defensive transition on that one. Boston College is so fast when they get going. Oh, 
Another shot, far post to front, across the front of Sophia LaRose. It's Kayla Martello again. And this whole sequence was started by Rachel Hall with this fantastic save. Duke working the ball around, gets room, point blank shot. Hall falls on it, gets their foot. She lays on top of it. That starts the transition. Boston College gets down. They work the ball. And Kayla Martello, the sophomore, with her second goal of the day, cutting this to a two-goal game. And we're back to the draw circle, which is going to become more and more important as the clock ticks. That's what's fun to watch about this Boston College team. They have some great upperclassmen, but they have a very, very talented group of underclassmen as well. We've seen a few of them show up, including a couple goals so far. We've seen Martello. We saw that McKenna Davis highlight goal minutes ago. And now it feels like the pressure's all on Duke right now. It really is. Does Duke have a response? Both these teams, you know, they're showing you why they're top 10. They have balance. They have depth. Both great on offense and defense. Great goalkeeper play. What a fun game. No doubt. It looks like another whistle. It's a, a number of players on the field. Potentially, it looks like Duke might have had one too many players out there, and that will give Boston College possession off the draw. The green card, and these little mistakes become huge down the stretch, and every possession becomes more and more valuable. So the Eagles with it once again. Already two goals this period, down two. Players shuffle their way on and off. Duke's Ben still communicating, trying to get the personnel correct. Sophia LaRose also all of a sudden is limping, not sure what happened there, but now she's coming out of cage with the help of her teammates. And this is huge for the Blue Devils. She has been the backbone of the team today. And she's favoring that right leg potentially, but not sure what happened. So that'll bring in Kennedy Everson, the freshman. She came in briefly earlier this game, allowed a goal, but now she will have all the pressure, the freshman out of Montclair, New Jersey. She's played in 10 games this season, 47 percent save percentage. And very she, capable. She is a very talented goalie as well. She got a start a couple weeks ago. Coach Kimmel wanted to give Sophia LaRose a little bit of a break in that game. Everson didn't allow a goal in her first start, but now this is the biggest test she's going to face now. Still unsure what exactly happened, and it didn't seem like a big deal until the stoppage of play, then all of a sudden she was coming out of cage with the help of her teammates. So definitely something to watch here. The 12.34 left. You'd like to see Kennedy Everson get out here and, and get a save under her belt and grow some confidence. She'll have her work cut out for now, Boston College. Putting the pressure directly on Duke. Duke riding an eight game win streak. A win today would be the best start ever for Duke through 16 games. No matter how large your, your margin is, how many more goals you have, you never feel like it's enough against Boston College because you know how potent their attack is. And there's a whistle. All right, we, we've seen them score fast. They've done it today. Played from behind some this year, not a lot. So there's the first big test for Everson here. Pass to Bell Smith. She'll go right to Cage and get it around Everson for the goal. And now Boston College to within just one. And that's really nice execution on the eight meter. Pretty pass. Everson didn't have much of a chance right down the middle. It's the wide open net. Nice feed. Good placement, and we have a one-goal game 
Belle Smith said her name numerous times in this one. The midfielder does it all for her team. Third goal, she's got the hat trick. What's Duke gonna do for an answer? Bell Smith has seven points today. She has the hat trick to go along with four assists. Been a big part of the attack today, but Boston College, who was down by six goals in that third, now just a goal away from tying it. And we haven't had a tie game in a long time. Boston College yet to lead in this one. Duke scored first and has hung on this entire way. But we still have a lot of time left. And this is where Duke has to play to win and not play not to lose. They've got to like pick up their game, continue on the attack, go after these loose these draws that hit the they've got to come up with the draw. The draws are so huge. You saw three goals and just two and a half minutes of play. And Duke will win this one. It's important too for Duke to capitalize when given the chance now. Boston College has gotten into a bit of a groove. Just patience right now. Take your time. Work for the best possible shot. It's what they've done all day. We've seen him take it all the way down to single digits on the shot clock several times. Eight different scorers in this game for the Blue Devils. Still a lot of time here. Anna Callahan with the hat trick today. Pass mishandled briefly by Heinemann. Scoops it back up. Boston College defense holding strong. They're gonna get a charge on that one. Right there, official on top of it. Another turnover by Duke. Didn't even get an opportunity to shoot that time. Eva Greco coming around the crease. She drops that shoulder into the defender and that's an easy one for the officials. Sure was. Faithful didn't like that one. They thought they had that ball back. Official with the quick whistle. There has been a lot of that today. A lot of calls that the home crowd hadn't been in favor of. The Duke's defense now has to come up big. Can't do it without, with LaRose. She left with an injury. Freshman Kennedy Everson's in. Another shot, or another opportunity right in front of the net, but great defensive effort to knock it away. And then a call on Boston College will give it to Duke, a big chance. It looked like it might be another shot right in front of Cage. It was a beautiful pass, and it just the, the, the Blue Devil defense, they just collapsed and broke it up and got the ball back on what could have been the tying goal of this one. But now with an opportunity to increase this to two, and it's turned over again. And these unforced turnovers, well, they're kind of forced, but these turnovers in general, Blue Devils have to do a better job if they've done most of the game taking care of the ball. But there they go, they get it back again. We're going back and forth here, Ben. Yeah, it seems like the pressure ramping up for both teams. That one goes out of play, and we're going to have a timeout for Duke. Coach Kimmel trying to get her, her girls together here because the Blue Devils have not scored here in the fourth and a four goal lead is down to one. Duke will try to make adjustments here when we get back. Well, we didn't expect anything other than a tight game here at Koskinen Stadium, but you just go back about seven game minutes ago and Duke had a nice lead up six on Boston College, but the Eagles have answered. Well, we knew they weren't going to go away easy, and they've got so many offensive weapons and a great timeout by the Duke coaching staff. And really to tell your team, you know what? You got to take care of the ball right now. Every possession's valuable, so protect your stick, take care of the ball, run through your passes. But now Duke's got to play to win. They, they've had the lead. They've played a great game. Don't second-guess yourself. Don't hesitate. 
stay on the attack and finish this one off. Duke was up 11-7 at halftime, just three goals in this second half for the Blue Devils, the nation's highest scoring offense at 18 goals per game. It feels like Duke may need to get to that number again in order to win this one and close out the victory over number two Boston College here in the final regular season game at home for Duke. Senior night or senior day festivities taking place after this game. A lot on the line for this team. And eight minutes to get it done. Here's Landry. She'll go right to Cage and out of the timeout. Duke with a big goal to make it 15 13. And there's the beauty of the timeout, the opportunity for the coaching staff to draw up a play, take your time, use some clock, and we're going to go and we're going to attack. But we're going to attack the matchup that we want. And let's give it to Abby Landry. Let's isolate her. She blows by her defender for the easy goal. Good stick work. She switches hands, rolls inside, switches back, finishes the goal. And that was a goal that Duke sorely needed at this point. You know, they, Coach Kimmel said they had the goal of her becoming one of their clutch, clutch players. She might be rising to that occasion today. Another hat trick. That's three straight hat tricks for Abby Landry. And that's what you want to see towards the end of the season. Individually, your players continuing to get better, which makes your team overall better. And as we head towards the end of ACC play with only one more game to go and into the ACC tournament, teams that are continue to grow and be on the rise, and Duke is one of them. Still keeping an eye on Sophia LaRose. She's out, so Duke trying to get her back working again. Kennedy Everson in there, the freshman. Not sure what happened with LaRose, but she was like working on the, the lower body on the sideline, getting some treatment. But she has been huge today for this Blue Devil team. She has eight saves, a couple really, really nice ones. And it's the reason why Duke has this two goal lead right now with possession. 7.25 to go. And we talk about Landry, nine goals in the last three games. She did not have a single hat trick before that this season. And Duke turns it over. Boston College making a big play. Yeah, that was strange. Jenner almost ran into her teammate, tried to go through two players, almost forced it and coughs up the ball. And that's just crucial. And as we said, like, Taking care of the ball right now is, is is a really big deal to coming down the stretch. And getting Sophia LaRose back would be a really big deal, too. Because, you know, if, if Duke comes up with this win, I, I think my MVP vote's going to Sophia LaRose today. Yeah, you won't find many that will argue with you there. So 6.40 to go. Plenty of time here. Boston College looking for a good shot again. Patrick's by Bell Smith. Jen Medjid have led the way for Boston College. A couple goals for Charlotte North as well. Duke's overall done a really good job against her. And Duke back in player to player defense here, coming out of the zone on this one again, continuing to mix it up, try to be disruptive, keep Boston College a little off balance. Here's Medjid. Under six minutes to go. Beautiful pass to cutting north, a collision, and they will blow the whistle. North was going hard to cage, try to split the defense, and Duke will get whistled. And Charlotte North goes to cage, she's like a runaway train. She's so explosive and powerful. Uh, kind of like clipped her from the side and knocked her over. It's a tough one. Cubby Biscardi there. 24 and white defending. So it's Charlotte North. Trying to make it a hat trick. She'll fire, but Everson with the save. How about the freshman coming up big? Gigantic save. Charlotte North so effective from the eight meter when she has that much room and she can wind up with that rifle of a shot she had. And that is the worst thing that could happen right now. An unforced turnover. Duke just throws the ball out of bounds. 
after that great save, BC right back in action on offense. Indeed, had a chance for Duke to maybe burn another minute, minute and a half off, but instead they give it right back to Boston College and Everson will have to settle back into the cage. We'll have a timeout. This is the finish we were hoping for. What a great save by Everson stepping in in place of LaRose who had to step off the field. Charlotte North, one of the best at the free position, so powerful. See. Right into her stick and the team goes crazy on that <laughs> awesome save. She's enjoying it too, look at that. She's fired up, but then the Blue Devils just throw the ball out of bounds and give it right back to Boston College. Five minutes to go. This game has been everything we hoped it would be, and I think we've got a whole lot more to see as we finish this one off. Yeah, Duke leads 15-13 here at Koskinen. Here's a look at the ACC standing. What's on the line right now? North Carolina undefeated. They'll just await Duke next week or on Friday. And Duke and Boston College trying to stay within one game. If Duke can win, they still have a chance to win the regular season. They really do as they head to Carolina next week for the final regular season ACC game. I mean, these ACC contests, these, these top four teams, it's just every game is like this. They're so competitive and so close. Syracuse did win today, so they go six and one. And, and Syracuse will host BC on Friday. So. This round robin finish is going to be fascinating to watch to see who comes out of it. But this this game will determine a lot of how the season plays out. It really will. Um, this has been a good one. Syracuse uh, first year head coach Kayla Trainer. She played at Syracuse prior to Charlotte North. Many people thought she was one of the best to ever play the game, but now she's at the helm after Gary Gate moved to the men's program and doing a great job with her squad in her first season. Well, neither one of these teams are thinking about what's next. It's all about. This final 518 here. Then George alongside Debbie Taylor. We're excited to bring this one home. Duke's led the entire way. Scored first. Boston College briefly tied it up in the first, but Duke's led ever since. But Boston College just keeps chipping away and is, is not back down one bit. Duke freshman at Kennedy Everson still in cage. Sophia LaRose dealing with an injury. She's warming up. We don't know if we'll see her again in this one. Blue Devils switch their defense again. Got her. Everybody has to know where Charlotte North is. Here's Weeks to the right side. Caitlin Mossman defended by Cosgrove. Zone is just so stellar and tight. It just cl they close up the gaps. They don't give you a lot of opportunity to see Cage. Pass into the middle. Beautiful look and finish by Boston College. And just as I say that, what a great cut. Another beautiful thread the needle pass. Boston College dissecting the interior of that zone. Wasn't even a ton of space, but just a great pass. I mean, just a tiny little back cut right there. Just you, the defense swivel, this doesn't swivel their head. Kayla Martello gets a little bit of room, and that's a pinpoint pass for that beautiful goal. And now we've got a one goal game. So it's going to come down to the draw as we buckle up for these final 439. Jenner, Duke's all time draw control leader, going against Charlotte North. Maybe the best player to ever play. Women's lacrosse, they were former teammates at one point here at Duke. And now they'll battle. Just one draw control away from 200 on the season as well. Can she get it right here and get Duke the possession back? That whistle this time will once again, nope, they reversed the call. It will go in favor of Duke this time. Maddie Jenner and Duke have been called for a few violations on the draw, but this time Duke gets it. And now you want to be careful not to make another mistake, right, and get a good shot. And you got to get through this really tough ride. Switch fields, good job. Get it down there, get it into the offensive attack, get into the attacking end, and go to work. BC really picking up the pressure, pressuring out. That draw 
decision was huge. And then, th you know, this year when the draw doesn't go over your shoulder, instead of the redraw, the officials determined who, who really made the infraction. And that time it was determined it was Charlotte North and it went to Duke. Here's Landry. Double team just knocked away. Another great defensive play by Boston College, but Carner's able to knock it away again, but the Eagles would come away with it. Here's Charlotte North. Boston College trails by one. Haven't led this entire game. Looking to even it back up here. And they'll set it up. And turnovers are really becoming, they're gonna become a story in this one down the stretch of Boston College pulls this one out. Duke's gonna go back and look at the turnovers they made late in this game. Yeah, and Duke has one goal this period, but they just haven't had a lot of opportunities, the mistakes you said. They, they've really, they've either turned it over or Boston College defense has done a really nice job holding. Well, Boston College trailed 11-7 at halftime, but they've had a flurry here as of late and on the verge of tying this up. And there's Charlotte North as she got going with her first goal of the game. You see this beautiful interior passing as as Boston College dissects the goal, the, the defense, Boston, <laughs> that behind the back shot, and here's Martella with one of her goals, and Boston College getting contributions from lots of different players. We see Bell Smith, who's had a great game today, and there's that little back cut, get a little room, not body on, and Martella with another goal, and Boston College has been very solid on the offensive end in the second half. Seven goals in the second half for Boston College so far. Three players with hat tricks. Bartello, Smith, and Medjit, and Smith, as you mentioned, having a big game. Five assists to go along with that hat trick, so eight total points for her to lead Boston College. For Duke on the other side, it's all about just getting a good possession a shot, but they have to get a defensive effort here first and a lot of pressure on Everson and goal. goal. They do, and then if they get the ball back, they have to take care of it, which they have not done well in this quarter. LaRoe is still not in. She's got her helmet on, gloves on, stick in hand, but still, Seems to be favoring that right side a little bit. Obviously doesn't have the trust to go back in right now with whatever she's dealing with. So it's gonna be on the shoulders of the freshman. She'll have to dig in in the cage. Those five assists for Bell Smith are career high for her. She's just a sophomore. She's already made a huge impact on this program in her two short seasons. So we'll see who steps up here down the stretch. Every possession critical at this point. If Duke can get a stop, has a chance to wind some more clock down. But Boston College looking to even it up. Haven't had it tied since the first, early in the first, 2-2. Two -two. Well, we asked Coach Walker Weinstein what she looks for in her recruits, and the first thing she said was they have to be deeply, intrinsically motivated, and I love that answer. And you can see how tough her players are, and another great pass in front of the cage. Boston College has been able to just get themselves free, create the pass, and these aren't easy passes. And that's a quick stick right there for the tying goal with 2.40 to the left. Wow, we've got us a good one. 15-15, a big goal by Boston College, and they are relentless right now. Caleb Martello, she's got four, assisted by Bell Smith. She's got six of those, uh, just adding on to her career high. And now it's a tie game, which is 240 remaining. Duke's just losing players in front of the goal. You got to have a body on, you have to have a body on people when they're in that space in front of the goal, and that's twice in a row now that a Boston College player has been able to get free in a small space and score. And it's tough when you're in a zone because you don't have a matchup, so it makes it difficult to make sure you do have a body on someone. Nine points for Bell Smith today. What a game. Yeah, that's, she's had a tremendous game today. She's had a great start to her Boston College career. Set a freshman record for goals and points, and now you see those nine points today, her career high. And she has kept Boston College right there, but this relentless pressure has been giving Duke a lot of trouble. And Duke had a six-goal lead in this one in the third. After a seven-goal lead in their only loss earlier this year to Syracuse. And Duke will take a timeout after winning that draw. Maddie Jenner with over 200 draws on the season. She just surpassed that. 
And now Duke trying to draw it up. Who who do you look to to take a shot here for Duke? I know we've seen today a variety of scores, but who do you have your confidence in right now? Well, they went to Abby Landry on the last one, and I think you really have to diagnose who has the best advantage. When you look at the matchups, do you create another isolation and a 1v1 opportunity for somebody who might be faster, bigger, stronger? Do you set a screen? Do you know it's really just going to be last time they went to Landry in this situation? You can see them doing another isolation for a player who has an advantage. We'll see what Coach Kimmel comes up with. Again, Duke just one goal here in the fourth. Had a four-goal lead heading into this final period. But Boston College has not gone away. And I don't know what we'll see here down the stretch, but it's going to be fun because both these teams have played well enough to deserve a victory tonight. Well, and first and foremost, Duke is going to have to take care of the ball. They've coughed it up the last couple times down in the offensive end, and they need to get a good shot on Cage, but that's by making good passes, running through the passes, making sharp cuts, doing everything with precision. And that's been a big story here in the fourth, is this Duke just hasn't had a lot of chances. It seems like they've just been on their heels playing defense for much of this fourth. But now is the time to rise. Any of the pressure's gone now, right? You've given up the lead. It's a tie game now. It's back to square one. And you got the ball with possession. You probably would have said this at the beginning. Hey, 2.33 left. You got the ball. Tie game. I think Duke takes it. You're in the driver's seat right now. You have the opportunity to get another goal, take some time off the clock. Here comes the double team. Who gets it across, one timeout left for each team. Boston College has really picked up the defensive pressure. They're pushing out, forcing these turnovers. Let's see what the Blue Devils are able to do as they settle in. Gonna use up a little bit of clock to start, space the field out. We'll see what the call is on offense. Also a big chance here at Boston College. If Duke does get a shot off. You don't want to give that second opportunity here to get give Duke an opportunity to run all the clock off and get the final shot off of this game. So whatever happens on the shot, Boston College will want to be there to clean it up. But Duke is going to run as much time as possible, 45 seconds counting on the shot clock. We're under two minutes of play. A nice move by Carner on Bell Smith. Carner goalless today so far. She's a player that also could step up. 25 seconds. Stuke teams won eight straight. Here comes the play. Jenner in front, goes high, and finds the back of the net. What a goal by Jenner, and Duke takes the late one goal lead. And that is exactly what the coaching staff wanted out of that timeout. Eat time off the clock. And we said, find the mismatch. Well, who has the mismatch? The tallest player on the field. And there's the alley pass. Jenner with the quick stick. She comes off the screen. She gets a switch, but not. She catches it high and she finishes it low. That beautiful play call by Coach Kirsten Kimmel and her staff and a beautiful executed, well executed play by Duke. Great job, Maddie Jenner, to finish that one and take the lead back. Love the alley-oop call. Duke women's coach Kara Lawson is in attendance watching as well. There's her, there's Maddie's sister Olivia. But fitting that the fifth year this draw, or the senior Jenner would come up big on that spot, right? And this draw is huge. If Duke can get this back, and there's Maddie. She's going to come up, knocking it down. Boston College comes up with it. We have a whistle. BC ball. It is BC ball. So. A huge draw control win that time by Boston College. So a chance now for the Eagles to tie it up. Can Duke hold on for its biggest win of the season? We'll find out. A freshman in goal right now for Duke. Under a minute to go here from Koskinen. This has to be the best team defensive possession of the day. We'll see if Charlotte North gets a chance here. Shot clock is off. Here's Bell Smith, a huge game today. Working hard. Carter comes up with the deflection. The ball rolling out. It's tracked down, fought for. 
Boston College wins it. The clock's still ticking, under 30. Incredible and we'll stop hustle. it. Incredible hustle. So 20, 25 seconds, not a lot of time here. Blue Devils are matched up, player to player responsibility. Olivia Carner working hard on Bell. Smith, another chance, the ball thrown away. It's deflected, it's scooped up. Can Duke take it? They do, it's Viscardi. She comes away with it as Cluck. Oh, the stoppage. Quick stoppage with 5.1 left, but Duke a huge defensive effort there. What a great defensive stand by the Blue Devil defense when they needed it most. They took care of it on the offensive end and executed that last play. And then the defense stepped up big, didn't allow a shot, forced the turnover. And we've got five seconds left on the clock. And it looks like Duke's going to be able to pull away this, I would say, upset. How about you, Ben? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, Coach Kimmel didn't know what, what to expect, right? I mean, you have a, a schedule that hasn't been the toughest on paper all year, but Duke has risen to the occasion today and held on and led this thing from start to finish too. But here's the sequence, and it was really a, a, a free-for-all over that final minute here as both teams were fighting on that last possession. Olivia Carner knocks that ball loose. Three players run for the ball. Carner falls over. There's the call on that. That checks, so and then they brought it back in. And here's how this thing finished up. Ball gets batted down again. Cubby Biscardi, huge defensive play, comes up with the loose ball. And that could be it. 5.1 seconds left to play. Duke has it. And really, just got to get it downfield, right, to get this clock down. but. Really just an incredible sequence defensively just to hold Boston College without even a shot there. Just tremendous effort, just great hustle. They want this one so badly. You could see it in everything they did today. And even when they had those couple turnovers, those missteps, they came back and they stepped up and they scored when they had to go ahead. And they just came through with that big defensive possession. Yeah, this would be a huge one for Duke if they can hold on. They're going to change the clock and add a little bit of time. We have now eight seconds left, so a little bit more time. But Boston College will have to get a quick turnover and shot to get a chance here. You see three defenders around Cat Berry who will bring it in and restart it. She's got to hang on to it. She's going to attack one defender. She's got her speed. She goes past him. And this one, ladies and gentlemen, is in the book. The Blue Devils emerge victorious. Big win for Duke, 16-15. They run out the clock on senior day and upset number two, Boston College. Duke closes out the homestand with a perfect season at home at Koskinen. And more importantly, gets the win on senior night, an all-around effort for this Blue Devils team. What a great win for this Blue Devil program. And as you said, this is officially their best start in school history with the win. Tremendous effort on both sides of the ball and a tremendous effort in cage by Sophia LaRose, the senior. So Boston College drops its second game of the season, coincidentally by the exact same score as it lost to North Carolina, 16-15. So Duke, who led the entire way start to finish, able to pull it off, led by Anna Callahan and Abby Landry's hat trick and Sophia LaRose, a big game. Charlotte North. Her return to Duke was spoiled as the Blue Devils come out big. So for Debbie Taylor, I'm Ben George. Thanks for watching us. Duke victorious, 16-15 on Senior Day.